just somebody just sent me a thing about uh, you're perfect, yes? Not meaning me, obviously, but meaning a me. Yeah, so in, so in the statement, you're perfect, there's a truth to it. You are, yeah? But what's hearing it as the hearer isn't, yeah? Mm -hmm. And very rarely do they follow that up with that warning. They'll go, you're perfect. And then that which you're not goes, oh, I'm perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the perfect time to put the message in there. And you are not that. Yes. Because then that identity that's just laying in the weeds gets pulled up by that statement, you're perfect, to claim it. And you can catch the fish. You can see it. You can see it. So... Someone's, I was just looking at, the, you know how they try to hook you into Facebook? They have somebody's name, you know, and said somebody may have commented on something that may had a little to do with uh, whatever. So you go there and look. And the thing was from some spiritual thing and it said, you're perfect. Yeah, and, and immediately there's a reaction to that that which you're not hears it and then hears that it's perfect yeah and there's no warning in the statement the person just goes you're perfect and then doesn't talk about the fish that rises up and claims it yeah which is the whole point the whole point it isn't the bait it's the fish yeah the bait isn't important the bait was you're perfect the fish that gets brought up to bite it, to get in, get it. That's the point. That's the value. And that's the warning. So uh, the emphasis is perfect, but not the one who heard the, the idea of being perfect. Because that hearing, that that hearer of the, the, the uh, condition of being perfect isn't you. This is what happened. There's these directions I heard and they were misdirected because I didn't have a warning that something arose and claimed the statement. And then it's sort of like a, you know, a, a mother bird that just regurgitates her food into the baby bird. I was the baby bird with the regurgitated food and it didn't work, yes? So same thing with all you are is consciousness. And the only way you can think about all you are is as a thing. And then how are you going to, you know, how, how is all that all you are as consciousness fit into this little like compartment? And without knowing it, you're looking from it. It gets in. Yeah. Before you're even seemingly conscious, it's made that it's determined what you're not. Yeah. So. And it keeps on going. They keep sending messages out this, you know. If if there is a false self, it's going to be defeated by your authentic self. They're both of them are bogus. Yeah. And that's the point. When the point of life's gonna bring it up, you're gonna see what you're not, the activity, because sometimes you get the grace of watching the claiming in slow motion. You can just see it, claim it, claim the thing, and then try to swallow it, yeah? And then the emphasis goes to, leaves what you're not and goes to the perfect, instead of the perfect is the bait to catch the fish of what you're not. So when you hear, just use it, simple right now, you hear the statement, you're perfect. What happens? What happens? Something arises and feels like, all right, I'm perfect as an imperfect fucking thing. Yeah. The, the, the serviceableness of it isn't the perfectness. It what's it arise, what it triggers to arise. Yeah. Is the activity of claiming. But most of the emphasis is on the bait instead of the fish. And then you keep taking the bait. Yeah. And you're the fish. And this way you see the fish and you're not that. So thank you for saying I was perfect because I saw that which heard it and claimed it isn't. Yes. Fantastic. 
it worked. Yeah, but without these warnings, the stuff's going to keep happening and you're going to be established as what you're not. And then all your desires and wishes are going to start there. When they should start, they should be before it. Yeah. So that you can see the bogusness of what's desiring to become something or undesiring to not be something it believes it is. You'll see it and it'll disarm the whole, the whole machinery. The, the whole machinery needs the, the counterfeit coin to trigger the whole machination. If you don't buy the currency, the machinery doesn't have the effect it used to have. You see it and you live free from it, yeah. Perfect, not perfect, you have no idea. Like the great idea of mind in Zen is I don't know or don't know, yeah? Yeah, so I know it's said innocently, but it does a damage, yeah? It does a damage because it's not presented with the warnings, yeah? It says you are the absolute, which is true, but that that which is hearing that and claiming it isn't true. And where do you see that warning on the on the on it? Where? Yeah. No one points it out. Yeah. They say the absolute, which is true, but what's hearing it isn't true. And then it now thinks it's the absolute as a thing. Yeah. How can it fit the absolute in that? It's impossible. So it has to make it up and make something up about it. Yeah. If you are the spirit, you don't get filled with spirit. You're already filled with spirit. You can't get filled with spirit. You already are with that. Yeah. So this is what happened with me. I started to see things I didn't see before. By just listening to satsang, I'd be listening to it, and I, I mean, it seems so perfect, the statement by Hoang Po about you can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. It's such a perfect statement, because you picture he was saying it somewhere. He just didn't write it in a book. He was speaking at a group. He was at a, a satsang, and therefore there was a group, and there seemed to be individual people there. Yet, he wasn't talking to the individual people. He was making a statement, just like when we're doing a talk and someone asks us a question, and then as soon as we engage with the question, it's, it's, not, it's not me and the questioner. It goes into somewhere else. It goes into the principal thing. And then sometimes they've been listening for 15 minutes, minutes and they're still there as if we're having a con I forgot the name completely because it has nothing to do with the question, it has to do with the answer. You go immediately to the answer, yes? Yeah, so. It was a simple thing in recovery. That's the one of the most important things in recovery, which is first, you gotta quit playing God. Now, when I heard that, I heard that as that which is playing God. Yeah. And now suddenly I had to quit. It seemed like another order. I have to quit playing God because I'm the one doing it, but I'm not the one doing it. There is no one doing it. There's a playing God. Yeah. And I'm not that. And how you, when it says quit playing God, my experience of that transformation was I lost interest in that which was playing God. It still is playing God. That's what the head does. It's not like it's going to be weaned off playing God. It plays God. When you wake up in the morning, it wants to forecast your day. It wants to tell you it's going to suck. And this and so, and that's so, and maybe you shouldn't, blah, 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 blah. Has no idea what's actually going to happen. It doesn't stop it. And no matter how many times you catch it, it doesn't stop it because you're not that which is playing God. I had no idea that. I believed I was playing God and I was going to have to stop playing God. And it seemed impossible at the time. 
Yeah, because how if that which is playing God tries to quit playing God, that's playing God. You can't get out of it. If you buy, if you've taken the bait, yeah, you can't get out of the fish. If you've taken the bait, you can't get out of the fish. So if I'm that which is, I believe, or I'm identified as that which is playing God, and when I hear I have to quit playing God, that which is playing God tries to quit playing God. That's playing God. Ad infinitum. It's not like, okay, it's only playing God. for No, that's playing God. If that which is playing God tries to quit playing God, that's playing God. <sighs> yeah, just throwing something at him. Yeah, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so this, this, all these misunderstandings isn't about the topic, it's about the one who's having the topic or entertaining the topic. The topic isn't going to clear up for you. What's going to clear up is the you. And then the topics are going to get very clear. You're not going to, it, you're, when it's you, the you that you're not, you're giving the topic the meaning. You inject it with a meaning already. That's not the topic. It's when you the topic turns into you and you're not that, then all these other topics become illuminated and enlightening. As if they weren't before, they were always illuminated and enlightening. It was, it, but not to the you that you're not, yeah? So everyone wants to, oh, you know, the bait is your perfect, yes? But how does that message be, how is it held? It's held as a thing. So what are you going to go get spiritual fucking uh, plastic surgery and try to make the thing look perfect? Or you see that you're not a thing. And then you have an acceptance of how you seem to be right now. Instead of a fucking denial of that and pushing and more and more forward, just like a spiritual face you're trying to save. So this message is very, very clean to me. And it's very disarming. And I don't believe there is a call to arms in it at all. Yeah, because every time there's the movement of the head, it's a movement of not you. So you don't try to fight it or struggle with it. Your shoulders drop. You just do it, let it do its thing. And you're not interested in it after a while. Yeah, so it plays God. But it can't, it's not playing God because you you're the God juice it's using. Yeah. If if Ramana Maharshi is correct when he says being ourselves reality, that means we're reality. It's not you as Paul for a second being reality. No, being ourselves reality. Yeah. So if something is seeming to be true, it's because it's seemingly be true to us. Yeah. It has no truthful meaning other than what we give it. And what the hell has happened? We've given something that is not us the meaning that it is us. And it's the one who gets the reads the topic. It's the one who talks about the topic. And the topic should be the one that's reading the topic and is being and is talking about the topic and see that it's not you. And you may lose interest in these topics. And maybe you'll actually feel what they were sort of uh, conceptually trying to draw a picture of to try to mimic something. You'll actually feel freedom and release. Yeah. And you'll see that you outshine everything, not as a person, but as what you are. Yeah, so. Oh, we see these things, you know. You, are, you aren't perfect, perfect just as you are right now, as you're, what you're taking yourself to be. You're not, yeah. Are you perfect? Yes. Is the one that thinks it's perfect, perfect? No. But are you perfect? Yes. But where are the warnings? You know, where is the stuff? When people would say, uh, 
what's looking is what you're looking for. And immediately you think it's you, this figure single thing. And then you're like, oh, I found it. No, it's what's looking. It's not who's looking. It's what's looking is what you're looking for. It doesn't say it's who's looking, it's what's looking. Yeah? Yeah. So uh, some people found it. They found their way to get in. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? They found the way to get in to sit at satsang. Yeah. I believe the head's lie is constantly repeated. So just by repeating the truth a little bit, it goes a long, 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 long way. And this is what this Zoom is. Zoom is this Zoom is a satsang, so we can entertain the possibility of what we are by seeing what we're not. Yeah. Simple. All right. I don't know who's running the show. Is it Judy Lovins? It is. Hey, There's Judy. no hands. Hi, Paul. No hands up currently. So if any one has anything they want to talk to Paul about, just raise your hands. Just talk about anything. Yes. Or just talk about it. Talk about it, talk about it, talk about it. Ba, da, ba, 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 ba. Yes. <laughs> oh, we have one here. Hold on. Oh, hey, all the website is down because. Oh, you do? Martin wrote it, yeah. Oh, right. Yes, have a if you have a question, yeah. The selfing, the movement of the of the mind, it's not made. It's 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 not made of selfing. <laughs> what is it made of? What do you mean made of? There's not something other like, oh, there is mind or, oh, there is, it's it's not made of another substance. It's made of spirit, so to speak, right? The self thing also. Well, let's say it's a manifestation of something, but it's not made of spirit. Maybe it's breathed out by spirit, but it's an activity, yeah? So the selfing is a mental activity. That selfing is, it sees everything and pertains it to a self. Yeah, so the selfing doesn't start, doesn't try to convince you are something, it says you already are something. So the assumption is pre-assumed that you're a, an existent thing. It's not, doesn't brook any idea that you're, an, that there was a non-existent thing that now suddenly is appearing as an existent thing. It just starts at you're an existent thing. Yeah. To the point where you are not held as a spirit, but you're held as a body. So when you say you, you're not talk, you're not picturing yourself as a, a you can't picture a spirit anyway. You're picturing a body. Yeah. So that's the self thing. So if you're listening to the self thing, the self thing implies something after you hear it, that appears to be before you hear it. So now you're the product of a certain hearing of it and you become the hearer of everything else, yeah? So the verb selfing implies a noun, the noun jumps over the verb and now is doing the selfing. So now everything you think of or kind of conceive or understand or ruminate over, has that center of self. So if you get a point where everything you meet isn't gonna give it a new meaning, it's gonna give it its meaning. Yeah, so let's say you get you hear an idea about the truth, that idea about the truth is gonna be translated through the self. Yeah. So Basically, after a while of this, you realize you never get anything fresh. It's already neutered by the one who's receiving it or hearing it. And you can't get before that as the one who's hearing it. 
the hearer of it can't get before the hearer of it. Yeah? So the hearer of it is appearing in front of the camera and you have a vague scent there's something behind the camera, but you can't get behind the camera as that which is in front of the camera. And this becomes obvious to you. And this is when futility and complete disappointment is the greatest successes. So you finally realize what you're taking yourself to be isn't you because you're seeing it from what you are. So you're seeing the, that which is appearing in front of the camera from before the camera, yes? And it's, it's, a, it's quite a convincing view, yeah? And now you're, sold, you, you're armed with an understanding that when all the selfing arises, you can greet it with, I'm not that, yeah? And not saying it so much, but an attitude of, I'm not that. And then suddenly you find yourself directed, not by that. Yeah, you, you find yourself learning, not through that. You're learning about it Yeah, and stuff like that. So suddenly the knowledge that would be neutered by the self-claiming it becomes knowledge of self, which is quite valuable because now you see the claiming of everything that you took personally is mechanical. So you get freed of a lot of ownership that you're really stuck with. Yeah. Yeah. This we just watched it in that movie last night about the the discomfort of something that he supposedly did that didn't look good. Yet it was all based that he was the doer before we got into the topic of what he did. That other previous topic was like a cement block, no talk about that. Is there a doer? So no, it was a given that we're all a doer and he did something really fucking uh, revealing that was quite uncomfortable for everyone who saw it or him himself and went on in the movie. It was a great movie, but nothing and every woman went to the sense of being a doer. It just was what he did or, yeah, or what he should be doing in his position and what her, her position is and what she did. And yeah, but the sense of doing, of being the doer was in question at all. This is, and yet it's a beautiful movie, but that's exactly what it is. It's a beautiful movie. Yeah. So never, was there, a, was the idea of being the doer a given? Yes, completely. Yeah, no one questioned when they were trying to find a, an excuse for the dude for not doing the right thing from that view, no one said, hey, well, there's no personal doer. So none, never heard that. And they could, they could have had 20 hours of the movie and they would never got there. Yeah, to me, all the interesting topics of after that had pale in comparison to the interest of the idea of being the doer to begin with. Yeah. I'd much rather go there because uh, it's going to be the beginning of thousands of movies. It's not going to be a topic of one movie. It's going to be the beginning and the end of thousands and thousands of movies of my life that I'm a doer. I'm the doer. Yeah. And it's so beautiful to go before and see if that's true. And if you've been in a life of addiction, uh, you were driven to some obscene conditions where there's no way in hell that you could have seen that you chose to do that shit. It just was no fucking way you could come up with, I was the chooser of where I find myself. And first of all, by the similarity of where you find yourself with every other addict and alcoholic, and by, and by the feeling of terminal uniqueness, like every one of the everyone alcoholic and addict, we all get driven to the same parking spaces, and yet we don't get that we're being driven by the same driver. Everyone's calling themselves the driver, and they're taking the brunt of being of actually being driven and not seeing it. Yeah, so it was a very interesting movie. But the more interesting part was they didn't even touch the part. Is there is there actually a personal doer? 
in life. And as Buddha said, hey, events happen, and that was an event in the movie. Deeds are done, and he was a performer of a deed, and there would be the real relief, yet there is no individual doer thereof. That wasn't available in that movie. <laughs> and in this movie, it's usually not available. <laughs> so the movies in this movie are very much telling about this movie. <laughs> is, is resentment always preceded by perceiving a doer over there? You mean being a person? Yeah, that, that you can only be resentful if you believe there to be a doer who did something. Well, resentment is spawns from that, for sure, because it spawns from self, and self is that you're a long-lasting, independent, separate entity. And you're the doer of what's done, the thinker of what's thought, the feeler of what's felt. Yes, of course. Of course. Just like Ramana said about this, the idea of free will, and I don't know what he meant, but how I translate it was he does he immediately goes off that and just says, if there's a sense of individuality. And if, and that means there may not, there's not necessarily needs to be a sense of individuality or that you follow it. So he says, if there's a sense of individuality, you can see the sense of individuality and not have a sense of individuality. So he says, if there's a sense of individuality, then there's going to be a sense of free will. But if there isn't a sense of individuality, you may be able to see through the sense of free will and see it is not yours. Yeah, that's the freedom. Yeah, the freedom is awareness. Yeah, so it was a great movie, probably tons of top things to talk about, but the whole point was, was he the doer? <laughs> or was she the doer, having great pride that she stayed with the kids and being super fucking judgmental because he didn't yeah the whole thing pivoted on doership right yeah yeah so whatever i can't see judy there's giant things in the way let me try to get out of there well chris gaskin has his hand up so chris gaskin you just, need, chris you just gaskin. need to unmute chris i'll tell you the movie before anyone asks what how do you say it the best way Force Majeure. It's a Swedish film, but it's set in a French ski lodge. It's quite good. A couple of years ago. And the same guy made another movie, The Triangle of what was that? The sadness. Of Sadness. The, the triangle, triangle of Sadness, which is in the world of models, is this little crunchy thing right here. Right here. They call it the Triangle of Sadness. We're all... The first Botox shot everyone gets is usually to clean up the triangle of sadness <laughs> instead of the sadness. I just don't want to sit the sign of the sadness. <laughs> hey, hey, Paul, uh, I guess. Uh, oh, yes, my man. How are I'm you, bro? Good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Um, but I think, uh, like, along everything you've been talking about, it kind of like it. Every, everything is built on time in a way, right? Yeah. So we always think about it or not think about it, but it seems to me that self in itself creates time in a way, right? So yeah. it makes sort of yeah. assumes that you were before and you will be in the future and you are now. Therefore, there's this thing that comes up called like psychological time. I mean, there is time by the watch and shit like that, right? But there is this psychological time that's kind of an illusion. And once you get rid of that psychological time, there can be no guilt, no resentment, no anything like that, right? Because you're just like... You don't get rid of it. You just... Uh, understand it, really. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. it doesn't fool you. It it's, doesn't fool you. It still it's gets produced right. because yeah, that's just you're amazing. an action figure that yeah. produces time. Yes. 100%. 100%. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then there's relief, yes. You don't take time or self so seriously yeah yeah and relief is the, you know once the relief is felt and sensed 
uh, it furthers disarming. Yes. Yes. And now you know the way you win is not to fight, so to speak. Yeah, you just sort of, things come up. It's not you. They tend to, because they want to set, it always, the head wants a part of you to show up and then an adversary to show up and the policeman and thief so fight it out and stuff. When you don't show interest in either the policeman or thief, there's a whole other song you can pick up. Yeah, yeah. But you can hear it with the other radios blasting, you know? So you lose interest in the other radios and then you start hearing, let's say, silence. This house is very loud. If you sit in this, where we are right now, it's like pulsating. The silence is like almost a heartbeat. Yeah. And then that, that's not even followed. It's just, you get consumed by it. Yeah, you're just in it and there's no you in it. There's just a sense of it. Something happened more as a body because I'm getting older. Yeah, and a lot of times when I wake up, my ears seem to be clogged and all I hear is the interior and that's starting to last longer every day. <laughs> it's so weird. I mean, you sit, you're, you're sitting in a very loud space, but no one hears it. Yeah, you're just like, hmm, that's cool. Interesting. Yeah. It's nice to see you, my friend. Yeah, it's very nice to see you. You came in and went like a ghost, but you left a lot for me. Thank you. Same here, same here. Nice to see you, Paul. Yep. And Annette has her hand up as well. So if you want to unmute Annette. Annette, come on in. Hey. I feel speechless. <laughs> Yet, um, yet, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, this is the triangle of yet, right here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's you know, I don't know. I'll just say for you talking about sound. I'm hearing you bring that up more than once, and. Like there's a frequency, I feel like that's that's the, the word that I could find today, you know, because I just no things are coming up that just are are new, we'll call it, you know, it's just or un, have been unnoticed, you know, and so when they're just like it happens more often, I'm I'm like, oh, that wasn't just me, but you know, I was, yeah. you know, it's it seems more real when it's yeah, you know yeah. it's more yeah. apparent. And so that was one, the du jour today, because it's a lot, a lot of it is got, it's been happening, you know, even there was something too, something that I, that's been happening even before I came here and I, I have brought it to my last teacher. So I'm going to just throw it at you out of curiosity, what, you know, just because I thought it's a weird phenomenon and just, so this job, I started this new job was like, you know, um, and it was, you know, taking a risk and, you know, get out of my comfort zone, et cetera, or whatever. And so I don't know if that has to do with it, like bringing me straight into like the present, you know, when I'm doing it or whatnot, especially in the training part of it. But ever since I started this job, you know, it, it very much in the beginning, but now that I'm getting more relaxed and comfortable, it's not as frequent, but still is, is that I swear to, I swear, I, all day I meet people, I, I, I meet people for the first time that I feel like. I know them. Like I've met you before. Like, you know, at mm. first it was like stunning. I was just like, you know, like, did she recognize me? Or, did, you know, like, where did I even know her from? Like, you know, because it's a new job and you feel a little off. And I'm like, was it at a meeting? You're like, I don't even know. I know this person. <laughs> but it just, you know, then it just became like, like a background. Like it's just how it is, you know. And I just, you know, I'm not questioning it. You know, it's just, I thought it's kind of funny, you know, like whatever. I, don't, I really don't know what it is. But it's just one of the one of the many weird, just un you know, I, I don't know how to define things that you are happening. To, you don't have yeah. to. Yeah. 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 You like the balloon at the birthday party, and it gets popped, and another one takes its place. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
It's a very incredible statement, you know, stopping to smell the roses. It's uh, you're going to smell and feel and hear and taste a lot of things. Yeah. It's crazy. The sense of, yeah. You know, it's like such things are so alive. The lot, the, I like to walk in nature a lot. It's, it's always been very grounding. So it's a very, it's a habit, but now even when I'm there, I'm just like, where was all this before? <laughs> you know, <laughs> everything is so alive. The smell. There's a lot off it being here, and you're always here. So, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you, Annette. Um, and I also just want to say thank you, Kathleen. She she got me in to the meeting so oh kathleen kathleen is uh she's working behind the scenes all the time that's good all right anyone else judy levins levins no other hands right this second the greatest hit of hits of judy levins a little famous album from the 70s Judy Lovin sings the Bee Gees. <laughs> uh, you're great, Judy. Judy Lovins. Yes. All right. Anyone else? Terry. BC. 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 All right. BC. BC. Hey, Paul. Yep. Hey, um, I don't know uh, what I'm going to say. Join the crowd. So uh, <laughs> there's playing God happening here um, or been happening here. Um, there's like a sense that there's this silent like vastness. Like just there in the background. And even when teachers or something talk to me, I'm like, I'm like, well, maybe I'm the fucking master. <laughs> and they don't know shit. And like, I know it's the head just like, you know, like just rattling off or whatever. <laughs> or yeah. And uh, but I just want to expose that, that there's uh, yeah, that. And uh, there's a fear. I mean, there's there's a the, the reality of it is that the person here, it's afraid of death. And it can like sense that there's like, it's like a death, like this whole thing is it is like, it's kind of a death, yeah. And uh, it's freaking out probably, you know, and uh, yeah. Yeah, but if you got it, then use the little trick, it's not you. And then you don't act out and you don't die and uh, things mm. get, yeah, well, let's say different. They get different. Yeah. Uh, only requirements is don't act out. For me, that was getting loaded and don't die. Yeah. And then everything's, yeah, because the head thinks it's dying and doesn't want that. So it wants to act out. So I have a mm -hmm. sense of control. Do something stupid. Mm -hmm. And if you don't do that and don't die, things go pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll take it, man. Yeah, yeah, there was a the the head is super afraid of dying because it never was alive. See? It's just it it's a narration. It's never been close to living. It just talks about shit. Yeah. It doesn't it doesn't touch anything. It's never felt anything. It's never seen anything. It didn't bring our life to us. It reports about it. it. It's like Howard Cassell calling a football game with an incredible bias. Yeah. So while you're in the game, it doesn't sound like he says the game's going. And we've given up playing the game and we're just listening to a narration of the game. Yeah. And that narration doesn't take a hit, doesn't do anything doesn't take a shit, doesn't smell, doesn't taste, doesn't think. It just critiques and goes over thinking and shitting and everything else. Yeah. Yeah. And there's yeah. a huge difference. 
in it. And so there's a figurehead of the narration. So the narration is brought to us with a voice, yes, that we're familiar with, and usually a face comes along with it, which is looks like you. And we're basically getting a blow-by-blow, pre-programmed, propaganda-built narrative. And most of us, without knowing it, are swallowing it. And so we're either struggling with it or trying to get out of it, but we're not seeing it as not us. So this is the best way to get out of something is to realize you're not in it. It's the best way because you don't have to go yeah. through any act of getting out. You're not in. <laughs> so if you're <laughs> not in, it's, it, dem- it dictates a whole different way to go than getting out. It does. When you're not in something, you're not doing much to get not in something. <laughs> it's when you think you're in something, you're trying to do a lot to get out. So this is just the whole, this is truly the easiest, softest way. Because all the stuff that we assume to be true isn't. And it gets questioned. Yeah. And right before your eyes, things can change because you're looking at them differently. Yeah. You're onto something and the narrative weakens its hold and you start, you're becoming a living based uh, event instead of narrative based event. Really, literally. Yeah. Yeah. And the yeah. narrative, you see the foreignness of it. You're not expecting it to change much. You don't put much emphasis into it or work. You just, it's like an old dog you've got is not going to learn any new tricks. Yeah. So you just sort of let it do what it's doing, but you've lost interest in it sufficiently that it doesn't have the power to affect you as much or direct you. And then you're not on, see a lot of people I re, I meet, one of the first feelings they get when they feel relief from satsang is they're given a permission that was withheld. Yes. They didn't even know um, a permission of just being okay was being withheld from them and they had to earn it or do something heroic or become a, this, get permission just to be okay. That's a, that's just null and voided. Yeah. Yeah. That permission is granted and it becomes stable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you may feel like almost a new oxygen come into you where you seem to be. And it's acceptance, literally. You're not living in a fucking field of non-acceptance. There's an acceptance. It's almost like breathing a different atmosphere. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know what was happening until months. And then I realized something had really changed, which was I wasn't like an urban renewal project being worked on or being planned or concepts constructed. Mm -hmm. It was just the budget was cut off and life spent it in better things. You know, and my day was enriched instead of enslaved to a better day. Yeah. So... Mm -hmm. You'll know, you know, it's a, the under, you know, it's a truth uh, that cannot be understood by the mental logic. You will understand the truth, but this is a truth that passeth your understanding, the mental understanding. It doesn't, it fulfills or actually fills understandings, yeah. but to the mental understanding, it's, it's it passeth that understanding you can't understand yeah. that's the great news about it yeah so yeah. that that ends that adventure of trying to understand and give meaning to something that's giving meaning to everything else that's given up and then something is revelatory like in recovery they told us like hey you can have a higher power of your own understanding so all right And then after a few months, it changed because I realized I don't want to have a higher power of my own understanding. I'm going to fucking completely severely disable the higher power. I want a higher power of its own understanding. And it's never changed. And that happened like 34 years ago. Never's changed. Never has changed since then. 
That's the attitude I have about the idea of a higher power. I have a higher power of its own understanding and it reveals to me what I need to know. And what I don't need to know, it reveals that to me. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yes, it's very uncomfortable to the head, but the head should be uncomfortable for a while because it's getting kicked out of its seat. <laughs> You're not asking it nicely to leave. You're getting booted out finally <laughs> by lack of interest. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, nice. That's very beautiful. Man. Hang out yeah, with us. You. You'll get some yeah. support if you need. And if you need it from other people, don't, don't, do not uh, just go out and do it. Yeah, just, yeah, talk to other people. And uh, this isn't about martyrdom or sacrifice. It's just about disarming and, yeah. yeah, 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 it isn't. This isn't the warrior's way. It isn't. This is yeah. nothing to do with war or anything else. It's not a ba battle. It's not a wrestling mat. It's not something has to be vanquished for you to step into the light. That's all made up shit. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you're doing. All right, bro. Yeah. We're gonna move on. Thanks, Thank man. You. Yeah, you're Appreciate welcome. it. Thank you. We're gonna bring you to into AD. You're gonna leave yeah. BC and you're gonna be brought into AD. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sounds good, bro. Yeah. All right, right. Paul. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, bro. Yes. Anyone else? In here, time. I wasn't hearing that a few minutes ago. Uh -huh. Did someone just turn the dishwasher on? <laughs> yeah. Who would do that? <laughs> uh, all right. Anyone else? Judy. Judy Lovins. No other hands, but there's a loud leaf blower here. Well, what? A leaf blower. Oh, that's totally uh, washed out. I don't hear it. Yeah, this algorithm decides what we hear or not. Oh, huh. yeah. I don't. We don't. I don't hear a leaf blower at all. Well, that's good. Yeah. All right. Anyone? What time is it? Anyway, what's time? Two one. What? I knew that. Yes. We got a lot of gelato at our hands here. So let's. Uh, anyone else, Judy? <laughs> no. Nope, no other hands. Oh, great. Let's say goodbye to today, I guess. Hey, um, I got to get the full screen here. Mm -hmm. I can't see everybody, but I'll get it soon. Is it the right corner? Upper right, yeah. Oh, this thing? Yeah. Oh, this view, yeah. Oh, I thought I got it. Of the gallery. Oh, thanks. All right. I got everyone now. My helper, Roman, is very helpful. <laughs> really. He's very helpful. So, all right. Let me say goodbye. Kerry, thank you. Thanks. And for everyone who found those, themselves in, you can thank Kerry and Martin and uh, Roman for jumping into the technology. Yeah. Yeah. There's uh, other Eric. What's going on, Eric? working on your boot and uh i'm hoping to have it done by the end of the month oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> these boots are made for walking yeah or, for, or in my case for limping and that's just what i'll do <laughs> i'm gonna limp away from you <laughs> martin pleasure to meet you martin you're the you and bc are the the youth wave of our our decrepitly old zenbitchslab.com. So don't worry, you're going to take over. You're going to take over. Yes, yes. More is going to be revealed to you. Yeah, just, just uh, yeah. Make a simple commitment to be willing to be led and something will lead you. Yes.
Yeah, yeah. All right. Lori, nice to see you. Lori, every time I see you, your hair is getting shorter. What's going on? Huh? I thought they, it grows longer. Huh. You're an unusual person, Lori. Well, we have Ben. There's Ben. Ben, uh, I think he solved, or the, the hair problem was solved for Ben, naturally. It's okay. <laughs> Miak, Miak. She's in the garage, satsang place. Nice to see you, Mia. She's uh, she's infusing our home with love and and uh, stuff, and taking care of our cat and dogs lovingly. Great, right? fantastic. I mean, Fatso has made a friend. Eh, that's very good. Our cat, Kathleen, as always, learning through osmosis. Yes, you can feel those Vedas coming up your buttocks. Yes, hi. Yes, J, J A. Dropping the dropping the news through beautiful music. Yeah, not bad. That's the way to go. We got Chris G. Chris Gaskin made a surprise visit to me. I'm so happy to see him, and. Uh, he walked around San Francisco quite a lot. It's, it's amazing. Nice to see you, Chris. Thanks for keeping us in, in your mind. Yeah. Very nice. Thank you. Axel. Axel's uh, coming to the Mecca of the East. He's coming. I'm on the way this week. <laughs> oh, good. Well, we'll be here and Piscara will be here, so... We're just waiting for you to be here. Just get in touch with us. Yes. All right. Rico Cruz. My hat's off to a man of uh, his word. Yes. Lynn D. She's now into the constellations. Yeah, that's cool. Andre. Holly. Holly Alba. I want to stop for a second and say how long I have uh, recognized Holly Alba at our Zooms. Really appreciate it. Eric and Vista got a huge hat that blocks the sun. That's pretty good. Chris a service at the garden. Oh, good. Chris H. <laughs> only has a few months. He's got to go back to work for, as Santa Claus. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We've got Andre JP. Is it JP? My old JP? Who knows? Remember that friend from Vietnam? Came in the Zooms earlier. I think his name was JP. So. Hmm. Jewels on vocals, beautiful. Only love can change the world. Fletch. Phone numbers, Fletch. Uh, he's going the devotion route in Germany. I hope uh, the Bhakti is doing him good. Yeah. Report in, Fletch. I'll be home September 24th. Fletch, uh, phone numbers. I don't know, Martin, uh, on another Andre. Hey, thanks, everyone. Hey, don't forget Annette. Aloha to Annette. Oh, Annette. Did I lose Miss her? She's, oh, there she is, Annette. Sorry, I, I uh, oh, wait a minute. We got- Aloha. Aloha, yes. We've got uh, Ramsey Van something. That's pretty good. Nice to see you too. Yeah, yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right, that's it, I think. See us, when is it? Tuesday. Tuesday, the 10.30 morning ones are on, and Thursday, and then the Saturdays, the Wednesday night isn't on, and the Tuesday afternoon aren't on while we're away. All right, see you soon. <laughs>